Yen here from Devolutions. And in today's video, we're gonna take a look at the 2024.3 release of our Devolutions product line. Now, some of the features will be what we call unified, meaning that they're available in multiple products. Others will pertain to a specific product, and I'll indicate them with a product logo so you'll know which features affect which products. Now, the features we'll spotlight will cover Remote Desktop Manager, or RDM, our IT toolbox, which centralizes and secures either cloud or self-hosted data to all your remote connections, credentials, and IT resources. Then we have our Devolution Server, DVLS, which is a self-hosted solution for managing remote sessions and credentials that can also work with our PAM product. Then we also have Devolutions Hub, which is our cloud-based service for managing passwords, websites, and other sensitive entries. Next up, we have Devolutions PAM for controlling and monitoring privilege accounts, identity providers, custom PAM providers, and elevated access. And then we also have Devolutions Gateway, which gives you recording, logging, and secure tunneling of sessions without exposing them to the internet. All of these features will be timestamped in our YouTube video. So let's dive right in into our unified features. Okay, so first up, helping new employees get started can be challenging. So at Devolutions, we wanted to help simplify the process with some new onboarding functionality. So notice here, I'm in Devolution Server, but this also applies to Hub and RDM as well, but I've got a new employees folder with some basic entry information in there, alarm codes, data center information, and so forth. Now what I can do is I can actually send this folder to specific users using the messaging center. So here I'm gonna send it to Maurice and I will mark this send with high priority. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. So if I log out of my admin account here and I log in as the user Maurice, as soon as Maurice logs in, or if he's actually already using Devolution Server or Hub, he will get a pop-up message. And in the pop-up message is the secure message, but there's also this new employees folder that he can save directly in his user vault. You'll notice he's got this folder with all the basic entries he needs to get started. So you could template your own folders and send them off to new employees as they start. Okay, so we just talked about onboarding. Now let's look at a new automated offboarding process that initiates when you decide to remove a user from your system. So for example here, let's take a look at Remote Desktop Manager. In my instance, I'll be using SQL Server right now, but if I go to users and decide to select one of my users to remove, Sarah Campbell, she no longer works here at Windjammer Corp, and I delete her, you'll notice that there's a new prompt here that says transfer user vault to a shared vault. If I select that, what we'll do is it will create a shared vault that I can assign a vault owner, like an administrator, for example. So here I will choose Bob as well as Maurice, since they're both admins, to be able to access those business credentials that Sarah had stored in her vault. Things like credit cards or specific websites that she only had access to. And now that she's been removed from the system, you'll notice her RDM license has been uh, liberated so they could be reassigned if a new employee joins. And you'll also see here, if I go down to my vaults, that there's a brand new vault accessible to both Bob and Maurice. It's Sarah's user vault. And if we go over there, lo and behold, you'll notice she did have a credit card and some uh, service provider credentials. So it's a good thing that we were able to transfer those without losing them. Okay, so that was an RDM. Let's look at it through Devolution Server. So if I head on over to Administration Users, I can search for that same employee, Sarah. We're gonna remove her another time. But here we can click on the Delete menu and a pop-up window will show up again with the Transfer User Vault to a Shared Vault option. And here I will assign a vault owner. I'll do the same thing like I did in the previous example. I'll select both Bob as well as Maurice since they're both admins and they can take care of her, uh, the contents of her user vault. It'll create a shared vault that will be assigned to both Bob and Maurice. And there, now you can see here, she had a secure system account as well as, oh, the credit card again. <laughs> so uh, it's a good thing that we were able to liberate and reassign uh, her vault to somebody else because there was pertinent information in there. 
Okay, we've recently made some significant changes in how SSH terminal functionality works. So we've added a couple of new features for you. So the first one we wanna take a look at is what we're calling the uh, broadcast all functionality. You can see here in RDM that I'm running three concurrent SSH sessions to various endpoints, but we've added a new button in our actions menu now that if you select the broadcast all functionality, it will let you simultaneously broadcast a terminal command to all three machines at the same time before you would have to manage the broadcast and add the sessions you wanted manually, but now you could do it all in one shot. And then when I'm done uh, broadcasting to all the sessions at the same time, I could simply select remove all broadcasts and it will unsynchronize them. Okay, continuing with SSH improvements, let's talk about syntax highlighting, a new functionality that we've added to that already existing feature. So if I go to the terminal display properties, I can either configure this locally in RDM options, or I can customize a specific profile. For example, I'll create a new uh, profile called bolded. So every time the word system shows up in my terminal, I can go ahead and make sure that it's yellow and I can now bold that term. And then I'll click okay and I'll update now you'll see that that word system is not only highlighted, but it's also bolded as well. We've made some significant updates on how you either grant access or request temporary access in order to have the necessary rights. Now, previously temporary access was limited to execute or view password permissions. With the latest update, you can now select a permission set. These sets such as operator, reader, or contributor are predefined groups of permissions. You can customize your own and make them available so that you can either grant temporary access with a specific set, or you can have users request them as well. Now, jumping onto Devolution Server, just so you could see what it looks like here, I could do the same exact thing. I can grant temporary access or I can request it from a user. And here I could select my user, Kelly. I can put an access duration if I want. And if I go to the permission sets, you'll see the contributor, operator, and reader permission sets as well. If I click the little eye icon, you'll actually see what permissions are allowed if you're curious as to what that default permission set allows. Switching on over to Devolution Server, we know that keeping user groups synchronized with identity providers is crucial to maintaining security of your system. So DVLS simplifies this process with group synchronization options, allowing you to sync groups on a schedule or on demand. So in administration user groups in the top right corner, I have that little group synchronization button. And if I select it, I can set a schedule and turn it on. I can have it recur daily or monthly or weekly, whatever I want, and also set the specific time frame that I want the sync to occur. So this next feature was requested by uh, one of our users on the Devolutions forum, and it has to do with Remote Desktop Manager and users that also have Hub. So in Remote Desktop Manager, you can use variables in other entries, which are useful for storing input, manipulating data, and maintaining the state of an entry. So previously in Devolutions Hub, when a RDM entry had a variable in it, well, the title name was not resolved. So sometimes it was a little more challenging for Hub users to know what the entry name was, but now it's been resolved. A lot of our Hub RDM users have told us that they like to organize their lists and folders of sessions and other entries by color. Previously, these icon colors in RDM would not have been reflected in Hub. So we went ahead and updated that in the Hub side, and now you can choose from a whole gamut of beautiful colors to customize your entries to your heart's content. Switching on over to PAM functionality, we've made an improvement on how we handle privileged accounts and sessions. It's now possible for users to automatically check in or be prompted to check in a privileged account. So to show you the whole workflow here, uh, I've just requested a privileged account to be used. I put an access duration of seven days and I've even elevated it with just-in-time elevation with uh, the domain admin account the approver will receive a request for the checkout and can approve or deny the account. 
Once approved, we can go ahead and launch the session and you'll notice that it's running through the gateway and now I can go ahead and perform all my tasks that I need to do. And then once I am done, I close it. What's new here is I've opted for a prompt to ask me if I want to check in the account or not, since I did originally request it for seven days. So this is gonna be great for me to manually check it back in. Now I can change that if I want to in my user preferences, I can ask it to always prompt me or I can have it automatically check in. To better protect local Windows accounts, Devolutions PAM has now extended its capabilities of the Active Directory Any Identity Provider to optionally include computers in its scans. To show you how this works, we're gonna open up Devolution Server as well as the PAM section, and we are going to add a brand new scan configuration. And this one we will call Active Directory uh, with Computers. We'll point it to the correct uh, organizational unit, and we'll also check that include computers in scan option. Once the scan is complete, you'll see that I have three results. I can either import all of those computers or just one. I'll just do one for this example. And then after that, I have to tell it which PAM vault I want to store this in. I'm gonna store this in my computer accounts PAM vault and then click OK. It's gonna go ahead and import it. And it looks like it was successful. If I head on over to that computer accounts PAM vault now, I can see that it created a folder with that computer as well as the administrative account. So I can now take advantage of all of the PAM functionality with this specific computer account. In the latest versions of Devolution Server, we've introduced the ability to launch sessions directly from the web using the Devolutions Gateway. Now in this version, we've taken this functionality a step further, so now you can even record these web-based sessions as well. So to configure it, we're gonna go into the RDP session in question and make sure that session recording is on as well as make sure that the VPN type is set to the Devolutions Gateway. Now you'll see if I open it up in the web portal and then I can perform my normal tasks as needed. I've sped it up for the sake of time. But then when I close out of this session, I can see that the recording is now available in the recordings tab and not just recordings that were done in Remote Desktop Manager, but now web-based sessions as well. Well, I hope that you are excited about implementing some of these features for yourself. And I would like to know which ones you're most excited about. So leave a comment below. Now, for the sake of time, we obviously couldn't cover all of the features in this release. So if you're interested to check them all out, I would highly suggest that you visit our blogs written by our amazing product marketing team for more details, as well as links to those release notes if that's your kind of thing. Now, before you go, there's one thing I'd like you to do for us. Could you please hit that like button and also subscribe to our channel? Seriously, it really helps us out to know that you are interested in this content and you want to see more. All right, well, that's it for today's video. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.